inspired by a lot of bucket list courses, principally Cabot Cliffs, Fryer's Head, Old Sandwich and Royal County Down. Strathlawn is my entry into the World Cup of Design 2021 and in this video we're going to look over every single hole, talk through some of the key strategic features as well as what I love about the course. You'll see from the flyovers that it's an environment that is cohesive and varied and there's been a lot to enjoy about building this one. It's been a huge amount of fun and I hope that as you see every hole that is here, you'll gain a bit of an appreciation for the place. So, the first hole at Strathlawn, and you've got a par 5 measuring just over 550 yards. You'll notice that you head straight down towards the river, which isn't really in play unless you're downwind and way right, and it's only there for the longer hitters. The ideal line off the tee is nestling up close on the left hand side, although being on the right will open up the green a little bit more. As you approach the green, it takes a good second shot to get on into, and it's not an easy birdie, although some pins are more forgiving than others. Everything runs from right to left and back to front on this green. As we cross the river again on the second, you'll see a large bunker complex grows up from the water. Now, it's only a mid-iron, but precision is really required on this hole, with lots of small half-tiers making putts on this green particularly interesting. You'll do well to come away with the two. Crossing the road brings us to the third hole and one of my personal favourites on the course. This offers a lot of options in where you decide to play off the tee. The ideal line is just over the bunker on the right hand side but that fairway cuts off way short of driver. You can hit driver down the left but be careful because you can run out of fairway easily. The disconnected green favours an approach from the right hand side particularly if the pin is at the front but a pin in the back right has a lot of slopes that will lead the ball towards the hole. This is definitely a birdie opportunity. The blind tee shot on the 4th is one of the most striking moments on the course and it's where we move from the woodland holes out towards the coast. You can strike fairly freely off the tee, there's a lot of room and the fairway does run the ball down and there's a massive speed slot on the left hand side of this fairway which can leave you just a wedge in. That approach shot though is quite fearsome with coastline just on the right and wanting you to bounce the ball short and run it on it's not a shot for the pain of heart. Following a short four and a short five comes the long uphill par four, four fifth. At just over 500 yards and 40 feet up, it's a fearsome prospect, particularly into the wind. But the green complex and the width of the fairway gives you plenty of room in which to move. Ideally, you'd be coming in from the left hand side, which opens up the green a little bit more. But any approach bounding along short and left will find its way to the back right portion of the green. There's a lot of ways to get the ball close on this hole. You'll have good fun here. The second of par 3 is on the front nine, and this one is a stunner. Looking all the way down, it's some 50 feet downhill, which is a huge elevation change, and makes you really question your club selection. You do want to leave the ball below the hole if you can, and the green all runs from right to left. A hole of two halves, we move out towards the coastline again, and this little compartment's a lot of fun. A very heavily bunkered tee shot where actually a lot of the bunkers don't really come into play although that one central bunker will test you downwind. The fairway is split by a hogsback spine which runs all the way through and into the green. Your ideal line to attack the pin is down the right hand side and that takes you away from the fall off left of the green. Again the green is actually more favourable than it seems and will funnel the ball pretty close to most pins. The 8th plays homage to the 17th at Cabot Cliffs and this one features an interesting split fairway that really tempts you as to whether to go for the green or to lay up. But the layup's far from straightforward with everything falling down and to the right. Whatever happens, your second shot is going to be interesting and you can drive the green so there's a real element of risk reward here. You'll see birdies, the odd eagle and certainly some doubles. Following on from the short par 4 8th we find another longer par 4 and this one has you hitting out directly at the cliff side and driver pushed right could find itself off the edge. If not you might want to skirt the bunkers on the left hand side but really the further right you are the more you're going to avoid that little bunker on short left of the green particularly for this pin. The green again more receptive than it would seem you want to be coming in bouncing the ball off the left and that will leave the ball on the putting surface. As ever there is a miss to be had. The 10th sets off from the clubhouse again and over a large ravine plus the road that brings you into the course. Now this one is really a 
question of the green. There's a very sloping green that really wants you to approach from the right hand side, but driver's too much and it's three wood could be too little. So you have to play a partial shot to get there. The large false front really dominates this green, with everything else falling dramatically from left to right. Certainly one way you want to be leaving the ball below the hole. The 11th sees us work back out towards the coast again. A mirror image of the 10th, but certainly a longer hole. These two play in tandem wonderfully. If one is very downwind, the other will be in too, and can lead to very diff different holes. Now this one, you want to be hugging more the left hand side to really open up the green, particularly to back right pins, and the green again will reflect that. There are some fun pins here and you can end up long left down in that ravine, it's not somewhere you want to be. It's hard to pick a favourite hole on the course, but 12 would be right up there. A long par 3 that really encourages you to use the ground and run the ball towards the pin. On the right it has a little bit of a beer at swale, on the left there's a tiny bit of a reverse redan, there's a bit of lion's mouth and it's a very long hole. Each pin poses slightly different problems with no one solution. As the shortest par 5 on the course, at just over 520 yards, 13 poses you a more strategic problem. Do you carry the river? If so, do you play out towards those bunkers? Or do you go for the really heroic but slightly longer carry on the left hand side? Or do you lay up short and you can still reach with 2-3 woods? But this is a green you really don't want to be long on, everything falls dramatically from, front to back, from back to front, meaning you definitely want to be short, and with a pin like this one, 30's no easy gimme. 14 is another short par 4, and downwind can be almost drivable. This one's one where you want to pick your position based on where the pin is in the distance. If you see it on the left of that bunker, you want to be up the left hand side in order to avoid that bunker going into the green. If it's on the right, you want to be has hedging your bets and going close down the right hand side. 15 is your quintessential cape hole where the closer you play to the water, the better you'll look at the green, and the shorter your approach, and probably the more level you'll lie. Playing further out right makes everything a touch more difficult, but with the green sloping back towards the water, you can still make birdie from there. To back right pins though, it's going to be a very tough challenge. However, this is a more receptive green than you might initially think. Pressure is all on the tee shot on this one. Our closing stretch sees one of each school of architecture. The first on 16 is a really strategic hole, a three shot par five, where you can clear the great hazard if you challenge the line of the tee on the right hand side. If you bail out left, you've got less chance of covering that bunker on the way just short of the green, which will mean leaving you with a full wedge shot and you want to question whether you actually want to carry that big bunker or not. And if so, which side do you want to be on? With this pin, you want to be further to the right, which will extend your landing area on the green, as anything approaching it from the left-hand side will make it very hard to stop. Unlike 16, there's nothing strategic about 17. 17 is pure penal golf. A small target, and you have to hit it. A short par 3 fits nicely, and the maiden star green with two distinct tiers forces you to be even more accurate with your tee shot. Par is easy, birdie, difficult. Many designers will say they tend to close with a strong finish, nowhere is this more true than at Strathlorn, where the 18th is definitely my favourite hole. A real risk reward heroic carry off both tee and approach shot. If you can carry the, to the left hand fairway, you'll have a flat lie and a perfect angle in. If you go to the right, everything is pushing you left and into the water, and this green sight is perilous. However, eagles can be had here, you can bounce down the fairway on the right hand side, you can land short and run it up on end. There are ways to get close, but it requires a lot of courage, and it's a fitting end. And so that finishes our short tour around Strathlorn. It's one of those courses where, played in different winds, played in different directions, and you'll see each hole have a different character. Hazards that you thought may not have been in place suddenly are, and slopes that you've not hit before and pins you've not seen will give you different chances to access those pins. It's a course that I truly believe has brought the very best out in me. I've done lots of things differently and it's a bit bolder than my usual. What you'll also find, I hope, is that it's immensely playable and offers you lots of chances to make a score and simply have fun. The environment, as you can see, is dense. It's 
really isolated, remote, but also has this sense of grandeur to it. And I hope that this short video has given you a desire to just get out there and go and play. You'll hit a lot of fun shots, you won't hit the same shot twice in a round, and you'll be asked to use the terrain in a way that I think it demands me running the ball into greens in a way that many courses just simply don't ask you to do. There's a lot of subtlety here for those of you who are looking for that, but for those of you who just want a bash driver, you can do that as well. Anyway, give it a play. I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. It's been an absolute blast to build and I'm delighted to be able to showcase it to you. And hopefully, it does alright in the World Cup. So, until then, see you later.